All right, so if you're here watching this video today, it's probably because you're interested in learning Elm. Maybe you haven't had a chance to dive into it yourself yet, but if you're wanting to get familiar with Elm, just kind of see what it's about and maybe see the basic program, then you've come to the right place. Today we're going to be building a simple program. We're going to be doing some state manipulation. Um, we're going to be rendering some things to the DOM, and uh, you'll get a chance to see exactly why Elm is powerful. And hopefully it'll convert your mindset and you'll want to build some Elm apps in your free time as well. So a little about Elm. Elm is a functional programming language. Um, it favors point-free syntax. It is auto-curried. It favors composability with the pipe operator and many more things. We'll get into those things in the future. This is going to be a multi-part series. But to go over the language briefly at a high level, um, it is a compile to JavaScript language, so you can write functional code and have it compile to JavaScript and you can guarantee that it'll be performant and you'll get no runtime exceptions due to its strict typing, static typing. Elm has great performance. It is, as you can see here, faster than all of its competitors, Ember, React, Angular 1 and 2 and so on. Not too sure about Vue, but Elm favors enforced semantic versioning, as you can see here. You can kind of read a little bit more about that. And there's some examples here on the site if you want to take a deeper look into some of the syntax of these projects. And then here's a few companies that are using Elm in production. So we're going to get started. We're going to go ahead and install Elm. There's a few ways to install it. If you're on Windows, you can try this Windows installer. Mac is very straightforward. But you can also npm install it, which is pretty cool. So you can do an npm install global elm, and, and it'll install that on your machine. So I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and install elm so you can walk through this with me. All right, so we're going to switch over to our terminal here, and we're going to create a simple elm project. I already have a simple project created. I am going to be uploading this to my GitHub so you guys can see the project files if you want to examine the code a little bit better. So assuming you've installed Elm already, go ahead and create your directory where you want to work in. I've created one called Courses, which will be uploaded once again to my GitHub, so you can check that out. So as of right now, I don't have anything inside of this directory. I'm going to go ahead and create a main.elm file. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up in my code editor. So I have my main.elm file. This is all you need right now. I'm going to import HTML. Sorry, I'm thinking in JavaScript world still. I'm going to import HTML and I'm going to expose everything from this HTML package. And as you can see, it automatically created this Elm package.json for me, which is pretty cool. Quick glance, this exposing means that it's going to import everything into my current module that this HTML module is exporting. So if I only wanted to get div or span or program, then I could just explicitly define those. But for now, I'm just gonna import everything from this HTML module. Next, I'm gonna define main. Every program needs a main. And for now, I'm just gonna supply the text function and I'm gonna pass in hello world. And this text function is imported from this HTML package. So I'm gonna do hello world. Of course, we have to start with hello world. And if I save that, there's no errors or anything, which is great. And if I switch back to my browser, first I'll run Elm Reactor in my terminal, and it'll give me this nice message saying listening on localhost 8000. I can click on that, go to the browser, and it's going to take me to this file navigation. I can click on main.elm. It'll take a second to compile my code, but eventually this will work. Just give it a second. And there we go. So we have hello world on the page. Pretty easy, right? So if I inspect this, open up body, you'll see the, uh, the hello world string there. All right, now that we have some simple text rendering to our browser, we're gonna go ahead and expand a little bit and create a simple little Elm program. 
To get this program started, we're gonna use Elm's beginner program. And beginner program takes an update function, it takes a view function, and it takes our model. So to get started here, we're going to create a model. We're gonna say type alias model, and we're gonna make that equal to a record. And the record is going to include, we'll name it message, and it's gonna be a string. So here's an example of Elm static typing. And inside of our record here, a record is just similar to an object in JavaScript or Python. But we have to define the types for our model. And a model is a type itself. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna say model is equal to our model. So we're gonna create this model record and it's gonna be equal to this type alias that we created up here. Next, we're gonna say model equals model. We're gonna call this as almost like a function. And we're gonna pass in this initial string. So far, we saved this. We don't have any errors. And if we go back to our browser, we'll see that we still see hello world. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an update. An update is a function that takes in a message returns a function that takes in a model and then returns a model in the end. If we save this, I want to show you this error that we get. Elm is telling us that we've created a type annotation for update but there's no corresponding definition. A way we can fix that is saying update, we're gonna create the parameter message and then model. You can name this whatever you want. We're gonna say case message of, and we're gonna create our first message to listen to. And I'll explain this syntax in a second once I'm done here. But we're gonna say message, and this is expecting us to return a new model, so we have to return something that is similar to this. Exactly similar, actually, because it'll throw an error if not but we'll turn a new record and we'll say message is equal to new message. So if I save this, we're gonna get another error. And if we highlight that and highlight this, it's gonna say that there's no message to find. And so we need to create a new type. So we'll say type message equals message and that's going to be a string and if we save that then we see where there's no errors and if we switch back to our browser we'll save and we still see hello world and the last thing we need to do to get this elm program up and running is create a view so our view function is going to be a function that takes in a model and just returns some html and it's as simple as that. So we'll say view model equals a div. And if we save this, then we'll get no errors. And if we switch back to our browser, we still see hello world. Okay, so we've done a lot here. I'm gonna kind of explain what we did and kind of some background info on what these things do. So our model here is our initial state definition. It is what we're gonna be manipulating throughout our program to reflect those changes in the view here. And as you can see, we said that our view is gonna take in a model and they're gonna return an HTML message, which is saying we're just gonna return some HTML. And our update here takes in a message and a model and then returns a new model. So if you're familiar with React and Redux, this is gonna seem pretty familiar to you. And that's because Redux takes their practices from Elm. In reducers in Redux, how it goes over a, a switch statement and goes over the cases and it returns state depending on the case. This is what this is doing here. So we're defining this message at the top and we're saying, if we encounter this message after an update, I'm gonna return a new model with this new message. The new message here is a string. One more thing, 
our view here is returning a div with two brackets. And this might look weird. I was kind of thrown off by this in the beginning too. But div, think of it like this. Div is a function. And the function takes in two parameters. It takes in the first bracket, which is where your event handlers will go. So if you were using on click, for example, I don't have HTML.events imported, but I'll go ahead and show that to you quick. If we wanted to emit a message on click, we would do this. And that's pretty much like emitting an action based off of an event handler, which you do in React and other JavaScript libraries. And if you wanted to add a placeholder here for an input, for example, you would do placeholder, hello there, and so on. But we're not going to have any of those for right now. And the next pair of brackets is where you nest children. So we'll have one child in here, and for now it's just going to be some text, just like we did down here. Actually, we can copy this and just paste it in here. And then if we save that, we're going to get an error. It's because we haven't return anything from main here. And the next thing we're going to do is instead of returning just some text here in main, we're going to return our beginner program. Beginner program is actually exposed from this HTML package as well. So we can say beginner program. And as you can see here in VS code, it tells us exactly what that takes in. So we'll say beginner program. I'm going to say model equals model view equals view and update equals update if i save that i can see there's no errors and if i switch back to the browser i still see hello world but this time it's in our div and that's because we're rendering a div here with some text in it so we have our beginner program set up we have some basic state but now we're going to try rendering that state. So if I say, hello, this is state here because we're, in, we're creating our initial message state right in our model. And instead of rendering text, hello world, I can render text model dot message. And this is how you access properties on an object or a record in Elm. I'm sure you're familiar with this in JavaScript and other languages. So if I save that, and I go back to the browser. Hello, this is state. So we're rendering our state to the browser now. And that's pretty cool. And now if we want to get more complex, we can create an input here. And input is the same way with the two brackets, like we're calling a function. We're going to drop this to a new line. And I'm going to render a div as well. And I'm just going to kind of put what we had back there. So now if I save that and I go back to the browser, I should see an input. And I do. Cool. So now we'll check out these attributes. Placeholder. Type some stuff. And if I save this, I'm going to get an error. And that's because placeholder isn't defined. So we're at the top, we're importing HTML and we're exposing everything, but we're not importing the attributes package. So to do that, we can do import HTML.attributes and we're going to expose everything as well. And if I save that, then placeholder is now defined in this module. And if I go back to the browser and I refresh, I see my placeholder. Now that we are rendering some text, and we're rendering an input. Let's try updating our state based off of an input message or an input event. To do that, we're going to have to import another package. We're going to import HTML.events and we're going to expose everything. And we're going to say on input, I want to call this message action. And this message action is going to return some text pretty much like an event value in React. And so we're going to call this message. It's going to go through our update function. It's going to take this new message and it's going to update our model dot message. And then it's going to go back down into our view. 
and we're going to render the model.message in this div right below. So if I go back to the browser, right now, hello, this is state is in there, but if we type some stuff, you see that we're rendering state. And this is Elm's virtual DOM. And you might be surprised, how is this happening? I thought Elm was a programming language. Well, it is, but Elm has its own virtual DOM implementation as well. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Like in JavaScript, you have to use React or Vue or Angular to have these virtual DOM capabilities, but in Elm, you can just write the language and you can have everything you need. So our first project is completed. We have some state rendering to the DOM. We built a basic beginner program in Elm. Next, try creating a button and then emit a new message. So we'll say increment count and then we'll return a new model here, however you decide to do it. And I want you to see if you can get that to render to the page. You're gonna have to do a few things. You're gonna have to create a new HTML element down here, create some new state in the model. You can do this. But remember, it's gonna throw an error because you haven't initialized that, that state in the model because you're only initializing the string here. So try to see if you can figure that out. In my next video, we're gonna dive into more complex programs. We're gonna build a to-do app in Elm. And throughout this Elm series, we're gonna gradually get more and more complex. We're gonna do some socket stuff down the road. Um, we'll build simple SPAs with routing and so on. And below in this video, I'm gonna have links to this repository on GitHub so you can see the code. And I'm also gonna have a link to the Slack channel for Elm so you can kind of talk to some people there's a beginner channel in there, so you can kind of ask questions. I know there's a lot of people not familiar with the language, but you can ask questions and get more familiar. And uh, hopefully I'll talk to you on there.